Gentlemen, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Mac Flash LFG. We have moved on. We have graduated from the Book of Boba Fett. It's in our rear view mirror. We're moving on to another fandom that we want to gab about. And it's going to be talking about Batman. Book of the Bat. Batman, directed by Matt Reeves in theaters uh, now. And uh, starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, and Paul Dano, amongst a plethora of other people. We figured it was a great uh, chance and opportunity to chat about all things Batman leading up to it. How did we get to this point of a kind of reboot, new character universe while, you know, Batman's still over here? There is a new universe that's being opened up, a darker, grittier universe. And we're going to give you the primer for what to expect leading into this film. And we're just going to... We're going to fan gab. I'm joined by AB and Matthew, gentlemen. So great. Howdy. Very Commissioner Gordon. You look awesome. <laughs> so what are we what are we chatting today, boys? You guys, we we all love Batman. How excited are we for for the Batman in theaters? Oh, like uh, definitely big big uh Batman fan. So any new Batman thing that comes out, I'm excited about. I'm not one of these ones who get bat fatigue or whatever it is. Uh, I'll, I'll take all the Batman I can get, just like Star Wars. Uh, they want to keep giving me new Batman movies as long as it's not, you know, a new goofy like '66 <laughs> style. I'm, 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 I'm. Who am I kidding? I'd go I see mean, that too. Six, yeah, '66 yeah. style. Come probably go see in theaters too. Is new. But uh, I mean, they released if they released a '66 style like they have on DVD. Grab yeah. that, throw it in the player. Sure. You know, you know, don't have to, you know, want to go see that in a big screen and have to. Uh, uh, dive deep in it but if it's something you just want to sit back and laugh at it's perfect absolutely um am i excited for the batman yes am i excited am i as excited as i have been for previous batmans uh probably impossible to uh to uh relive the hype that certain ones have done before and we'll certainly talk absolutely. about those yeah and show. that's that's exactly what i want to dive <laughs> into this is going to be more of a of a fun, you know, where have we been? We've all been alive as the the main Batman burst came in 89. Theoretically, you know, there was the 66 Adam West show. None of us were around for that. We've we've appreciated it. Bam, pow, kapow in uh, YouTube clips and DVD. But we've all been alive and along the ride since since Batman 89, Batman Returns, and, and subsequently, uh, I haven't missed one in theaters since Batman Forever in 95. I was seven then, and uh, uh, full circle again, I had a Riddler obsession in 95. Do I? Does it carry over in 22? We shall see. But um, so we've all seen the Batman movies that, that came, the, the, the two Burtons, two Schumachers, three Nolans, and then the Snyders as well, too, which I guess you can call all as half Batman movies. But uh, there's been quite a few um, to date, gentlemen. Favorite uh, favorite Batman? Who? What do we like? What's uh, which kind of Batman storytelling have we gravitated and liked to the most on on Cinemat? Uh, well, if you're gonna go cinema, I mean, if you're, I mean, technically, it is there is a cinema version of this. Uh, my favorite Batman uh, came on the small screen uh, and then graduated to the big screen with Mask Mask of the Phantasm, and that is, of course, Batman the Animated Series. Uh, Batman voiced by Mr. Kevin Conroy uh, and to date uh, and I'm very excited that's one of the reasons why I'm very excited about this new movie uh, there's a comic I got signed by Mr. Kevin Conroy <laughs> at Motor City Con uh, right. at one, th one of the things that, uh, that I, I love about uh, Batman the Animated Series as well as Bat Mask of the Phantasm is uh to date it is the only version of batman that has got it perfectly balanced in who batman is what batman is um where he is not just this you know biff baff boof uh crime fighting uh superhero but also the world's greatest detective and it, it balances that world perfectly where you know he's it's got the the uh noir detective meets modern day superhero uh and it melds the two together and uh you know the other movies have thrown little one or two second you know scenes in there 
uh, to kind of, you know, show, oh, this guy's really smart or, you know, he figured one or two things out, but it's never really uh, had a mystery like they do on uh, in the comics. And then, you know, as, as I said, whereas he had, you know, Batman, the animated series, they literally ripped whole storylines straight out of the comic books, put them on our TVs. Uh, and as a, you know, uh, I would have been, a, you know, 11, 12, 13 um, in that range when uh, Batman the Animated, Animated Series first came out. And, you know, me as, you know, Batman comic book fan just went berserk because it was, you know, like seeing the comic books come to life on screen. Uh, so that to, to, my, to date, that is definitely my favorite Batman is the Animated Series version. And I'm hoping... You know, we'll get into it, but I'm hoping that that, that the the new movie is closer to that. I uh, no, made that's... mention of uh, uh, how he's very much. Uh, they do a lot of the uh, crime solving and mystery stuff in that show, and uh, a lot of the show, a lot of the movies rather, have done one or two scenes of him uh, figuring out the Joker's plan. In '89, he figured out that the chemi- the certain the chemical, types of chemicals yeah. are doing it. Uh, in Batman Forever, he's working out some of the riddles. Batman and Robin, I think, has zero. I think he does like a background <laughs> check on no. Mr. Freeze. Does he, who, gets, who nails the password? Or no, but that's Batgirl. I feel like yeah. Alicia Silverstone <laughs> does the most detective work because she has to nail the computer system. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but with like all of her process of elimination. Uh, but even then, yeah. actually, I want to go back to Kilmer too. He's actually the anti-detective because he gets his shit broken into and destroyed. Very so right. people are detectiving his shit. And, and they like when Nygma gets there... They just were like, oh, here's everything. And then I'm like, yeah. that's the opposite of being a good detective. So of all of the Batman, past, present, future, live action, future. or whatever, the animated series, that animated series, Batman, is definitely the smartest one. Yeah, and well, and and not only that, and like we're we're not gonna get into him, but it also for me has the greatest jo- version of the Joker, the perfect version of the Joker as well, where he is insane uh but also funny and uh you know balances that world too where he's goofy and you know also murderous and it has a thing of of course voiced by the wonderful uh, mark hamill uh and you know that to date that's my favorite joker as well and who i think of as the perfect epitome of the balance of that you know hilarious plus wildly insanely like crazy and willing to kill people but that's the thing about the animated series and i think we can all agree i think the i redid the animated series as the batman's uh probably two years ago i want i wanted to redo them before this but just when the pandemic first hit i I did a whole marathon and i introduced uh, my wife natalie to them as well too because she has only seen in bits and maybe the nolan ones and didn't really know much about before but i did redid most maybe the first three seasons of the animated series and it's just it's the best best encapsulation because you have the most time to grow with it you have 25 sure. episode seasons and it, and they're very episodic which is like yep. a, a small little paperback it's like a six issue trade where yep. you can do these stories and it fleshes out you know to date you could realistically say that two-face has never really been done right i mean in right. the dark knight they really rush eckert's storyline and they kind of truncate that but in the animated series you get three episodes that start season one where they're old college friends and that's right. working together and they're working cases together and bruce is like his financial backer and and uh harvey's running for da and there's all this stuff that again the animated series allows the universe which is the batman universe is one of the main reasons we'll get to why it it's lasted so long, you know, over 75 years, and then in film going closer to uh closer to 40, where it's it's just it allowed it to breathe, and that's it. You get the most time with the Joker. We've probably spent the most time with Hamill's Joker than than Nicholson and Ledger combined. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Matt, what well, do you got? Who's your favorite? What's your favorite? Um Batman, Batman movie. What do you got? What do you want to chat about? Um, now my pick for my favorite Batman. Uh, after I I thought about it, and he was number one on my list, of course, right off the top of my head. And then I rewatched the movies, and I was just to make sure that my pick wasn't 100% nostalgia, and it isn't. Now, in 1989, I was four years old. And I wish I could have found the uh, clip from the home movies I have to add into this, where uh, one of my birthday presents was two 8x10 
uh, pictures for the upcoming Batman. One was the symbol that you see on Scott's chest, just a horizontal eight by 10. And the other one, uh, there it is again. And the other one was full uh, as a vertical Michael Keaton in the cowl. Now, I kid you not when I tell you that in this uh, home movie, it's me unwrapping the present and shouting at the top of my lungs, Batman! <laughs> From that point forward, for the rest of my life, I will always say that Michael Keaton is my favorite Batman. And yes, it, there is a nostalgic part to it, but his movies are, I mean, in, in, in terms of his performance as Bruce Wayne and Batman, there's very few flaws in it in yeah. my mind. I mean, there's like Scott mentioned about Val Kilmer being anti-detective and that movie is very, very closer to uh, talking about his uh, mental problems or issues or his P PTSD about his parents. Uh, Clooney is just a ham. Yeah. He's hilarious. He's a very good actor. I'll never say George Clooney is not a bad is a is a not a good actor, but that was not that's definitely not my Batman. And it's <laughs> actually sad that. Uh, the kid who got to see his first Batman movie in the theaters was 89. I weep for the kids who saw Clooney as their first Batman in the oh. theaters. And if they ever said Clooney is my favorite Batman, because I saw that in theaters, I have to be like, oh, you poor son of a bitch. <laughs> Clooney's a great Bruce Wayne. Clooney's a great Bruce Wayne. Looks Clooney's great. a happier Bruce Wayne and yeah. a very visible Batman, which is against character type completely. Guys, Guys, it's hard for me to say really bad stuff about Batman and Robin because that movie gives us Arnold and it's super oh. homoerotic. So, <laughs> oh, just, please continue. I, I mean, I, I love Arnold to pieces. Arnold is one of my favorite people of all time. Uh, but that is also not Mr. Freeze by no. any way, Listen, shape, I, or form. I got, I got a little, I want to clear out on some Freeze later on too. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know how you guys feel about him as far as uh, being the great. I mean, we have AB's favorite is obviously animated series. Yeah, but, uh, I, I would say as far as the movie uh, Batman's concerned, my, I'm I'm also in the Keaton camp. Uh, I, that summer leading up to um, eighty nine Batman was the most hype I've been for any movie of all time. Uh, yeah, and you I get was, to experience because you would have been twelve. I was twelve. At the time. I was twelve at the perfect. time, and like literally, two. like uh, literally, like I said, you know, I I got, um, uh, you know, again, you're coming off of this is, I you you know, you previously before that you had your Superman movie in seventy eight, or uh, and you had, you know, a couple other like cheesy ass superhero movies. Um, in well, between obviously, then. this is coming not right off of, but the most prevalent batman to that point was adam west right but but and like there, basically like comic book movies. there was a life dead 25 years but there yeah, was no there's, there's nothing happening as far as comic book movies go and like your comic book movies up until that point were cheesy ass like you know david hasselhoff and tights kind of thing and like uh it, it so when i saw you know the pictures and the stuff coming up from 89 batman and it looked like a comic actual like actual comic version of of a batman movie and like exciting i i mean i i, I could not be more excited for any movie so when you said earlier about you know you couldn't be more hyped for then it couldn't possibly be more hyped yeah. for the new movie no one I, i'll never be more hyped for any movie probably than i was for 89 batman so yeah i mean it's it and, it and it lived up to everything it lived up to all of it and then it exceeded um i mean <laughs> like I, I messaged the guys today and i was listening to prince's batman soundtrack to, at work today just to prep for this uh it's got prince doing the soundtrack to 89 <laughs> batman I, I i mean come on come on prince and coca-cola your two favorite things <laughs> at, at age 12 and they are prominent in that film absolutely uh, no, and that's great i've always been jealous because you are you are the perfect age for that i guess i'm 13 when x-men comes out 14 when spider-man ish so like yeah but it's not the same the floodgates were kind of open and everybody was but it was definitely more special in that time because pre-internet pre-animated series and it just kind of wasn't you know wasn't as mainstream cool at the time so no i can definitely uh test how that would be a uh a special time um i forget where i wanted to go with that but so matt batman 89 favorite is your favorite batman film to date uh yes today yeah i mean 
that's the easiest answer for me to say that. And Michael Keaton being my favorite Batman for sure. Correct. Uh, yeah. But that's, oh, and that's the other thing. That's that's where I was going to go is, so I did allude to top that we are getting this reboot of Batman. And it is interesting that Warner Brothers is just now in the Batman business because for years, now we're a more sophisticated audience than we were 10, 15 years ago because we understand the concept of multiverses and things like that. But for years, there was trepidation about George Miller's doing the Justice League while Dark Knight is in theaters. And they're going to get confused if Army Hammer's Batman over here and Christian Bale's Batman over here. How are they going to understand? Yeah. But now... We are getting Keaton back. Keaton yes. will be back in The Flash. Ke Keaton's back for The Flash and Batgirl and probably quite a bit moving forward. And Ben Affleck's back. And it's going to be Affleck's final performance um, for now. We'll see. But kind of the passing of that universe, the Snyderverse, which is kind of now not the Snyderverse. I don't know. But it's its own thing. But now Warner Brothers is just like, cool, dark and gritty, almost R-rated Batman with Colin Farrell and his spinoff show and all this. And then we're bringing this back and we're going to have Batgirl over here next year. And we're going to have Keaton as a through line there. And they're all just going to do their own thing. And we're going to make billions of dollars with every franchise. So uh, that's the, that's the fun thing. Cause now it allows us to have the Affleck Batman and the Keaton Batman as well too. Well, it's so, kind of where it's, it's kind of where the state of um, com the comic, the Batman comic books are uh, currently too. Uh, DC has a uh, different lines now, where they have the black line, which is the dark, gritty, like adult Batman stuff, where you get your stuff that kids should never ever be reading because it's very dark. And then you have you know your almost sixty six version of batman for the kids for like little little kids and they have everything in between that so it it it, it kind of has that where warner brothers is doing stuff for everyone which is nice and they yeah. have they have batman 89 miniseries for all of us uh, <laughs> kids who yeah, love that that's right, that's right. Bert, burton's batman 3 line 2 so there's like yeah. i said there's lots um i'm gonna just put a bow on everything here i do want to talk about my favorite batman and the first batman i saw was kilmer in theaters i i was along the ride for batman returns i definitely had the, the happy meal toys i have the big bat cave figure i have keaton figures i have a pfeiffer figure and um and i have batman returns toys certainly didn't see that movie until until home release but i was along the ride i think i saw batman forever a few times in theaters i was obsessed with the riddler jim carrey 1994 95 <laughs> jim carrey was my absolute was my guy Market corrected by Will Smith after the 96 on, but that 95, Jim, we had some good times. I was Riddler for Halloween for like the subsequent three years after that. My dad made me this nice suit. I had the gold cane. The gold cane is still at my parents' house. I wish I had brought it for this. But I was thinking, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do favorite Batman and um, kind of go through the list. And I thought I would have uh, ended on, you know, the popular answer for a 35-year-old my age who was, you know, in high school when, when the Nolan trilogy came out. But I'm going to say today my favorite – Batman is uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. Can you guys see that? No. Nope. Where am I? Right here. Oh, Perfect. He I'm working off one screen. So I, I will say my, to date, my favorite iteration of Batman is Ben Affleck's Batfleck Batman. Hmm. And I will say I confidently that it's probably the closest to the animated series that we got, both in looks and demeanor. And he kind of conveys that kind of Bruce Wayne and Batman style. So he's the closest to the animated series. So I'm kind of a cousin of, of that argument as well, too. I like Batman vs. Superman. I was going to say more than most, but I actually legitimately like Batman vs. Superman. I think it's probably the misunderstood masterpiece of a generation. Messes up in some parts, and a lot of it's at the end. It's very akin to like a Revenge of the Sith, where it's like, man, this is so good. It tried to bite off too much that it can chew. And some of the, it fumbles a li little bit of the execution, certainly at the end. But I really like a lot of what it does. It probably has my favorite scene to date. And it's at the opening of the movie when Bruce Wayne is driving through the streets of Metropolis. And the helicopter lands and it's it's Detroit, which is cool too. <laughs> but Affleck's running. When Affleck's running in and the dust is coming, I remember being in the theater. I worked at the Leamington Theater and I brought, it was Good Friday when the movie came out and I brought like 10 of my friends. And I remember being like, LFG before that was a thing. <laughs> Let's go. And I like that movie for that. So I do think that my favorite iteration of Batman on film is probably Affleck, but I will give a shout out to 
now I tie it up. My favorite Batman film to date is Batman Begins because I do think Batman Begins is the best iteration. And, and I wanted to put Bale. I thought that's the easy answer, but I'm the guy who uh, I definitely like Batman Begins more than The Dark Knight. I think it's better too, to be honest. I think it's easy to come out here and slurp up The Dark Knight, but I think Batman Begins really, like I said, when I saw it at midnight when it came out, there was like six people in theater. And I remember going to high school the next day and being like, that's the greatest comic book movie I've ever seen. Nothing will top it. And I do really like Liam Neeson as as uh, Henri Ducard, Ra's al Ghul, that whole twist and as well. So uh, favorite iteration of Batman to date uh, would be Affleck. He's my second favorite actor. So play, and playing the role too is a little bit of a fun wrinkle. And uh, and I really enjoyed uh, what they, you know, Nolan's Batman Begins. But that ties it too. So because there was a lot of love for The Dark Knight. And a lot of people will say that Ledger's performance is probably the best to date we've gotten of a villain. And certainly it's the only one that won an Academy Award uh, for for you know a comic book film and certainly for well, that Joaquin film and supporting category yeah but at the time oh. so what i will lead to this is so as we open it up both cinematic and um comic book wise favorite batman villain who let's keep the joker out of it um who are we going to say is is our favorite batman villain today uh okay so um yeah like like you said uh i mean joker is the obvious number one batman villain my number two and you just mentioned him uh is Rachel ghoul or Raz as ghoul uh Raish is who he's called in, in batman the Animated series Raz is when the in the movies and the arrowverse uh you have from the comics in the top there from the animated series in the top right obviously liam neese in the bottom and um is it uh matt nabel uh as uh him in the arrowverse season uh, three arrow of the Zero season, season, yeah it. and is and he's great and so it's good. it's great when they bring that at first i was like why is uh raza ghoul coming into arrow and they kind of do they kind of rip off batman begins in on that season but it's it's really good uh he's just a really great villain and he kind of has that criminal underground and uh his first appearance is in 1971 in batman uh 232 uh and in that he it literally um plays out ex exactly like it does in the animated series his first first appearance in the animated series is a two-part thing uh called death's uh death's quest volume one and two part one and part two in which robin gets kidnapped as well as uh rachel ghoul's daughter talia uh, and uh, 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 Raish comes and to Batman, figures out who Batman is, and comes to him and says, "Hey, you, we need to team up and try and locate Robin as well as my daughter." Uh, and you come to spoiler, you come out to find out that it was all of a test from Rachel Ghoul to test Batman in his detective skills as well as his fighting skills because he wanted to him to be the next uh, head of the League of Assassins, the next. Uh, um, demon's the, head. Demon's head. That's right. Uh, and so uh, you know, he, he, he's just this great villain. You know, he, he's got a long history. He's hundreds of years old. He's created this gigantic network of uh, of operatives all over the world, as well as the League of Assassins, where you know they train in in, in martial arts, uh, all forms of martial arts, and. Uh, uh, he he's not oversaturated. I, I think he's kind of gotten a little bit more oversaturated, but he only makes limited appearances in both the comics and as well as in the the movies slash shows where you know he's he, he pops up every once in a while in the animated series. He's not in there all the time, as well as you know he he now he he kind of he's popping up a lot more. Uh, but at the same time, he's not oversaturated like your Jokers or your Harley Quinns, where every time you turn around, you see Joker, or every time you turn around, you see your Harley Quinns. He's a little, got a little more mystery to him, and uh, that's definitely why I'm I'm a big fan of uh, Rachel Ghoul. And yeah. you know, and and on top of it, he's he's not what he's he, he, even though he's got these like terrible. Um, like reasons for doing things like he basically wants to wipe out the world and cleanse the world. Uh, he's also has honor and he also has, you know, codes that he stands by. Um, and at sometimes, you know, teams up with Batman and Batman, the bat fam to do various things as well as Talia. But yeah. Uh, and so, uh, just a great, uh, storyline. If you want to check out a comic storyline of, 
uh, Rachel Ross Al Ghul is called Batman Death in the Maidens, and it is about uh, Talia as well as Nissa uh, Al Ghul and kind of uh, the, the little storyline between the two of them and their father uh, and kind of Nissa coming back for revenge on her dad. Uh, Nissa, who doesn't appear a whole, a whole lot, she appears and obviously has a big role in the Arrowverse, but uh, it's a gr great little storyline uh, if you want to check out a gr good storyline for him. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. A great answer, Matthew. What do you got? Who's your favorite Batman villain, either on <laughs> film to date or um, in expanded universe? Uh, that's not uh, that's not Jared Leto's Joker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, we uh, Scott mentioned him before, and uh, I'll just talk about uh, uh, him briefly and what made him become one of my favorite villains. Uh, growing up, it was like uh, similar to. Uh, Scott, it was the uh, was the Riddler because Jim Carrey had taken that role, and I did remember Frank Gorshin, and he was, you know, he was pretty much like uh, a villain who uses trivia, and every time he appeared on screen, it was great. You got a game to play along with Batman. You got to figure out. You tried to figure out what the riddles were. Uh, growing as I became an adult, though, and started reading some of the uh, Batman, well, the Batman, uh, some books. But it really happened uh, in the anime series, especially when you talk about when you go back to talk about the character. Uh, my favorite uh, Batman villain, and it might even be bet more than the Joker, is Harvey Dent. Two of course, it's great. And I obviously nice. I have the cool. animated series version here because this is for me the best version of Two Face in terms of absolutely storytelling. I mean, uh, specifically in well. In many books, when Batman meets a new villain, you don't get uh, uh, an origin story. They usually just show up, and then if they if they get over as as far as uh, becoming a fan favorite, they'll get their own uh, short story uh, talk about the origin and what happened. And Two Face, specifically in in the animated series, like Scott mentioned, got a, like a three or four episode arc. You meet him in the first uh, episode on Leather Wings, where he's just the DA. He's talking to Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Bullock, and he says to Harvey, if you catch the Batman, I'll convict him. He's the DA. That's his job. Batman's a vigilante. I'll put him behind bars for you. Uh, another a few episodes later, he's uh, dating Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy kisses him, puts him in a coma. He's still Harvey Dent at this point, and clearly a friend of Bruce Wayne. And then we get to Two Faces two-part episode where we have the, uh, the, first, uh, the first part we get to see... Uh, the, the mob has dug up some dirt on Two-Face, and uh, he uh, they threaten him with it. They bring him to the office. They threaten him with it. He has a split personality disorder, and he uh, becomes Big Bad Harvey. The, uh, <laughs> the terrific uh, voice acting of, I forget what his name is. He was Bull on uh, Night Court. Oh, uh, Richard Mull? It is Richard Mull. Yeah. And he has two distinct voices, one for Harvey Dent and one for Two-Face similar to Kevin Conroy having one for Bruce Wayne and one for Batman. That's right. Uh, the voice acting on the show is obviously terrific. Um, he switches to big, bad Harv, And in an attempt to uh, um, take out the mob boss, he, his face becomes disfigured. And uh, then we get into part two where he looks like we just saw, and he's trying to take down the mob his own way. Mm -hmm. He's and uh, because he's taking the law in his own hands, similar to what Batman does, but in a very different fashion, Batman takes him among, amongst himself to stop him. Now, what makes Harvey one of the better villains is Bruce's uh, sympathy or empathy for Harvey. Mm -hmm. He's his he's his best friend growing up in, as far as the uh, animated series is concerned. He was his best. They went to college together. They uh, started dating some of the same girls at one time. Or, or another it carried over be, in the films too it could yes it did but in a very different fashion um and in some of the books specifically in uh dark knight returns uh bruce wayne pays for harvey's plastic surgery yeah. uh, to uh re to uh, rebuild his uh the bad side of his face it kind of goes awry in that uh mm. as part of harvey's uh uh mental illness he doesn't see himself as looking good anymore at one point he says now both sides match he sees his entire face as gruesome 
and continues to be a villain. But uh, the point that uh, he's one of Batman, well, not Bat, well, in a certain point, Batman's friends as district attorney, and we see it in uh, Dark in the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman and Harvey have a very good professional relationship, but uh, as Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent, they're fighting over. They got the love triangle going on. And and I'll just mention one more in Batman Year One. Batman's first ally, aside from Alfred, obviously, is not Commissioner Gordon. It's Harvey Dent. In Batman Year One, uh, Commissioner Gordon is. He's got like a vendetta against Batman. He's a vigilante. We have to arrest him, bring him into jail. So Batman doesn't trust Jim Gordon right away, but he does trust Harvey Dent. At one point, uh, Gordon goes to Harvey's office because he suspects that he's Batman and he's uh, his uh, theories are laid to rest. And you uh, Harvey closes the door and you hear and he says outside the window, you can come in now. And Batman walks in. It's clear he's ba- one of Batman's first allies and a dear friend to him. Becoming an enemy, and I don't know what else to say, he, he, but definitely my favorite villain. That's a great pick, yeah. So, I, I know. No, I know, like, like, like you said, you, uh, you know, kind of like uh, it fleshes it a little bit in Dark Knight, but if I felt like it did it in Justice, where you know, it's almost an attacked on end, where you know, he's a, a villain for like the last 15 minutes of the yeah, movie, yeah, that was a you know, real and, and it was just, just kind of like speed track to for him to be the bad guy. And I was kind there's of a lot of behind set up him to be in the third to be the there's a lot of behind the, the scenes third. that Nolan might not have come back for a third one. This is all dumb politics stuff and revision, but if Nolan didn't want to come back for the third one and then they wanted uh Two Face to be the villain, so he wanted to finish the story in this, and that's why it seems very truncated at the end. So, yes, they there's been I think three iterations, right? There's been Billy D, Tommy Lee, and and um, and Aaron Eckert. But yeah. I mean, theoretically, have any been done right? I don't know. There is no Not there is no Harvey Dent. In, <laughs> yeah, what? the animated series has been done right. Yeah, like, no, I thought you said animated series. I was like, oh, the animated series. No, 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 the animated series. Yeah. As I said at the start, yeah. you allow the most time with it. Yeah, you have three shots at live action. And uh, and they both haven't. They've all not been. There is a DA character played by Peter Skarsgård. He plays Gil Coulson in the Batman. Um, he's on the cast list as uh, Gotham's DA. Whether or not they siphon him as the proxy for Harvey Dent, the relationship, or he eats it at the end, and there's a new one in the sequel. Yeah. Who knows where we're gonna go with that? But uh, I'll finish things off here with the um, kind of go back with. Um, my favorite uh, villain, who's not the Joker, and I was gonna, I was gonna say the Riddler. Like I said, just uh, how special 1995 was for me at the time, and the suits and that. I loved it, and I love Carrie's persona. And and even then, in the last little bit, to get a Riddler fix, he's he's great in the uh, the Arkham City games. There's kind of side missions, and in, in uh, Arkham Asylum, the first one, he's got side missions, and then he's one of the main villains in. Arkham City, and I, I don't play much video games, but at a time these were the only video games that I I made my, for must play, and um, and I was gonna say him, but the more I thought about it, I was gonna change things up and uh, and say today my favorite villain has been Oswald Cobblepot as the Penguin, and I'm gonna there's a picture of Danny DeVito right there, and just rewatching Batman Returns, I'm just like man, DeVito's so so good in this. And how do you follow up Nicholson as the Joker in 89 and, and you get two villains and uh, Pfeiffer who looks as beautiful as anyone has ever looked apex mountain beauty in, in uh, this film. And um, Oswald Cobblepot is, is doing his own thing, you know, playing the penguin is more of a deformed creature, very different from Burgess Meredith's in 66. And he's more of like a Tim Burton kind of creation and he's deformed and he's got flipper fingers and he lives beneath the city and he, uh, he lives with a, a family of penguins and his uh, his mission is to become mayor of Gotham City. And he links up with Christopher Watkins' character and that whole thing you already know. But I just think as you look into the idea of the penguin, what and, and this iteration and, and then the new one we get now, it's just a great character that's much like Bruce Wayne in the way of Bruce Wayne's, you know, deformities and his scars are more internal and emotional and and the penguins are more of his appearance. And DeVito plays that as being the other side of the, of the coin to Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is the orphan, um, you know, beloved orphan of Gotham above 
the city, and Cobblepot is the deranged orphan below the city who was abandoned. Whereas Bruce Wayne was, his parents were taken, uh, Cobblepot's parents gave him up. And I just think that's such rich with storytelling there too. And and we are, you know, the umbrellas are all fun. As a kid, I thought <laughs> the umbrellas were so goddamn cool. And uh, we are getting the Colin Farrell with prosthetics version, who's immediately been fast lit for his own HBO Max show. And I was like, okay, I'm kind of a kind of little bit in on on what they're doing more of a, a you know a mob boss Crime soprano boss, yeah. style that's exactly what we're getting um i wasn't quite sure i remember you know there were rumors before and certainly the nolan rumors were that they were going to incorporate a cobblepot as kind of an arms dealer and mm. i think that that's a perfect way for him there but like a you know the mob boss taking over power he's kind of he's kind of perfect in that role so i am excited to see what colin farrell does in the prosthetics chewing the scenery yeah. And giving him a more, you know, realistic approach, kind of like, you know, their answer to Kingpin, where he's very emotional, but very brooding and uh, and tough. I like that. And I will say the one thing, you know, they, they got house money with me because after the Suicide Squad, they greenlit the Peacemaker show with Cena. And that show wrapped two weeks ago. It gets an A plus for me. That's one of the best seasons of a show I've ever seen. I'm not going to hold the uh the penguin cobblepot show up to that regard but like i said getting a side character who gets his own show they're one for one they're a big one for one grand slam so i'm sure that they could uh follow that up so as far as villains that have been on uh screen animated and in the video games i'll say my favorite is uh is oswald cobblepot is the penguin so um so we've dove into the the rogues gallery which he's got an incredible rogues gallery but he does have a deep he does have a deep family i mean in film now uh, it's only really been explored through one Robin, but shocker, there's lots. There's like six or seven Robins that he's had, <laughs> and they're all different. So his family outside of the films has not really been explored, aside from his parents in every GD film. Um, but Batman does have a wide uh, Bat family, per se. And, uh, and I think we'll just go around the horn and talk about some of our favorite characters in that. I mean, it's going to be more expanded universe. We'll talk in more comics, but... Andrew, who do you got? Who's your favorite so far of the Bat Fam? Uh, okay, so like you said, he has a Bat family, and it started off with Robin, uh, and you know that's kind of a like you said has not been a thing that's been explored in the movies as much, and uh, definitely uh, like it's a little more explored in the Batman the animated series, but even then, it's not explored as much as it is in the comics. Uh, Batman family to me is super important. Uh, in that he has this um, group of people that he has is trusts and trusts and also as uh, a father figure too and, and you, know, you have all the Bat uh, all the Robins but also you know the, there's a lot of the Titans uh, who come under that umbrella as well um, and you know of course the the mentor figure to him being Alfred uh, but my number one is the original uh, it is Dick Grayson uh, but it is Dick Grayson as Nightwing. I for, for as a kid, I always hated Robin. I thought Robin was super annoying. This dumb little like tack on sidekick that was always doing goofy <laughs> stuff, always getting himself captured, always getting himself you know out of distress. Uh, it wasn't until Dick Grayson uh, had a parting of ways with Batman where they disagreed uh, about methods and about uh, uh, you know just how. Uh, Batman went about his thing that Dick Grayson became Nightwing uh, and became one of my favorites. And so Dick Grayson, uh, you know, uh, as Nightwing, uh, you know, basically became a second Batman uh, equal to him in, in fighting equal to him in intelligence and, in, you know, trained by specific, like basically for years as uh, Batman's second Uh but is kind of doing his own thing, kind of uh, off on his own uh, side thing, but always loyal to Batman. If Batman ever needed, needs him, he is there and always comes out. And uh, on top of it, uh, basically is a mentor to the other Robins. So when you bring in the other Robins, when you bring in your Tim Drakes, your Jason Todd's, uh, Dick Grayson is there to mentor them as well because he's been there. He knows what Bruce is like. He knows... Uh, how Bruce, you know, 
treats his robins uh good and bad and uh there are negative aspects to the way he treats his robins so uh dick grayson's there and so he's not only uh you know the mentor the the uh uh the apprentice in being batman but he's also a mentor to the younger titans and uh, again to the, the the various robins that have come along and so i've i've always had a very fondness for dick grayson so is this kind of funny to that elev evolution of my like where i've despised like not despised but i disliked robin and at that point where I, where, when he, you know, kind of graduated to his own, become his own superhero, I was like, oh, crap, this guy's awesome. That's exactly, uh, that's, that's the popular consensus as well, too. I mean, if you look at Robin, there's, there's a lot and people are kind of out on him and he's always been kind of painted in this weird picture and whatever B stands for as far as being a sidekick or, or add on or tack on or whatever. But Nightwing has almost a hundred percent approval rating. People, people love so. And there, uh, and, and you know, pick. we're a very uh, soon. Of the, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't know when it's going to come out. It's been in production for a couple of years now. In various stages of production, uh, we will uh, very, hopefully soon get a Nightwing film. Uh, we have Nightwing well, in the Titans show. Uh, which is, you know, very good. I, I, I enjoy Titans very much, but I would very much love to see I think, the Nightwing film. I think, and I don't want to spend too much time on prediction. I definitely want to hear Matt's. I think if they have a golden opportunity in the Flash film because Affleck will be written out and we know, and if, you know, fans of the DC Snyderverse know that, that they have the dead Robin in that, the Joker murdered the Robin. And, you know, if Flash goes back and does Flashpoint, maybe bringing Keaton back or or he comes back and something's a little different. There's your chance that maybe Affleck's Batman died and Nightwing took over. There's something right there that can be done. You know, you just got to massage yeah. a little. But I think you'll get a Nightwing answer before the end of the year is done. Uh, Matthew, Bat Family, who's who's your guy or gal? Well, it is a guy um, for it was hard for me to uh, pick because I. Uh, Similar to AB, I was not a big Robin fan, but I was never a Nightwing fan either. And then other mem members of the family would include uh, Alfred, sometimes Catwoman, Catwoman, and he's got several other uh, little boy sidekicks, um, also donning, donning the name Robin. And, and, and girls, there have been two uh, girl Robins that I can right. remember. But my uh, favorite member of the Bat family and is the inspiration for my costume today is yeah, police right. commissioner gordon yeah great and awesome. so where are you gonna take mine <laughs> um now i just have the photos here and i'll not go deep into all of them but uh he commissioner gordon is introduced in the first batman comic along with uh batman so he's Absolutely. Maybe not necessarily he uh, Batman's first sidekick because I'm pretty sure Alfred is there as well, but he's there from the beginning, and uh, their relationship is established uh, pretty concretely uh, uh, throughout the entire um, comic book and movie and TV uh, situation. Uh, uh, Batman calls him, or Batman calls himself the the night shift of the uh, Gotham de Police Department, and uh, he calls Gordon the day shift. Um, in Batman 66, he was very much like a big city commissioner would be. He had a desk job. And uh, whenever <clears throat> he never went out on the streets uh, shoulder to shoulder with Batman all the time. He did sometimes, but not all the time. And similar was uh, could be said of Pat Hingle in 89 and the, the two Burtons and the two Schumachers. He was very much in uniform quite a bit. He had very much... Uh, police medals and regalia and stuff. He looked very much like a big city uh, uh, head of a police department, a commissioner. And then we get into Gary Oldman of the, uh, well, the, in the animated series, we have, oh, I forget what is the voice actor's name. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, but he is much closer to being a shoulder to so, sh shoulder to sh shoulder with Batman. Um, he will most often uh, though uh, be on top of, Batman police headquarters, or Gotham police headquarters, shine the bat signal, uh, let Batman know about what the situation is, and Batman in, uh, like, uh, he says in uh, 
Batman Begins. I'll look into it. And uh, goes off to uh, take out the villain of the week, as it would be. <laughs> Do you have his name, maybe? Are you looking for it? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm okay. Gonna, keep no. going. Uh, Gary Oldman then takes the uh, commissioner role for Batman Begins and the uh, Nolan verse. And that is where we get uh, Bob, some Hast of... Bob Hastings. Bob Hastings is correct. That's yeah. the voice actor of the Batman the Animated Series, Commissioner Gordon. <clears throat> Um, Gary Oldman, uh, we get quite a little bit of backstory, which was written in the comics uh, that uh, after Bruce Wayne's parents have been shot, uh, Sergeant Gordon is first on the scene and he uh, uh, mm -hmm. speaks to Bruce about uh, about what happened and their origin story begins, their partnership begins. And I really love their relationship in the Nolan verse. Uh, after Bruce returns from his uh, days in... Uh, the far east and training with the league of assassins he finds the one good cop who uh thankfully and uh co coincidentally is the uh one cop he could trust uh based on their his experience as a boy because that yep. uh, that scene is depicted in that movie where uh commit or sergeant gordon puts his coat on uh little bruce's uh shoulders which is uh, a tearjerker of a callback in the uh dark knight rises when he uh, mentions it again yeah. <clears throat> in uh the dark knight gary oldman is pr is uh, promoted to lieutenant he's head of major crimes and he's in charge of finding out who batman is and <laughs> bringing him to justice which of course he is not going to do because batman helps the city and we are going to help him in any way possible he becomes commissioner and in uh the dark knight rises there's a great scene where bruce wayne dons a ski mask and uh, visits Gordon in the hospital uh, uh, kneeling against his bed and uh, holding his hand, talking about uh, the uh, enemy of Bane and uh, his destruction of the city and uh, what they could expect from him. Um, I've been really getting into a lot of different cop shows recently, and that really solidified my choice of Commissioner Gordon because as far as, especially in the animated series and the Nolan verse, those are very much cop movie or police drama esque stories, and they really uh, tug at my interest for sure. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Gordon, in any capacity, has not never been done unwell. Pat Hingle, you know, kind of is very dependent on go get him, Batman, and I'll <laughs> I'll keep uh, I'll keep uh, my seat warm in, at the <laughs> desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, from the bat signal to the bat phone and uh, uh, anywhere in between in terms of their communication, their partnership and friendship is really, uh, I guess, beyond words because I can't think of any. Well, and, and, and it's they have such a great relationship, too, where is, you know, uh, you know, uh, Batman, you know, talk about family, Barbara Gordon, his daughter becomes Batgirl uh, when tragedy Joker paralyzes her. He's, you know, Batman's there for gordon and for 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 the family uh at one point in some of the storylines uh gordon's wife gets killed uh and you know so the, i mean they kind of share in the tragedy of gotham um where you know they lose family members or family members you know get hurt or whatever and so uh they they have this bond that between the two of them of almost like soldier two soldiers that are on the war on Gotham, and so uh, they have, um, you know, like like a soldier, like a brotherhood, uh, mm -hmm. and they share in the, the grief and the 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 victory, victories. So yeah, it's uh, they have a great relationship. I love Christian Gordon as well. He wants to give Batman as much credit as possible, but uh, is one way or another unable to. Sure. And, and well, uh, it, well, he's and he's not, you know, unlike a lot of the other characters in the police force and in the things in the politics, like uh, thing, he's not political at all. He wants he's a good man who wants to keep the streets clean, doesn't get into a lot of politics of uh, of the day and, you know, kind of fights against that, which is also what Batman respects, too. And he doesn't he's not looking for glory. He's looking to actually clean up the streets. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but I'll bring things around too. I wasn't quite sure I was going to go for, for one of, you know, Bruce's relationships. I thought Talia would have been great. I really like where that storyline goes with their, with their son. Um, but ultimately there, he's not a good, he's not a good husband. He's not meant to be a father. He's not meant to share his life with anybody. He is meant to share it with one person, however, and that one person is his 
unbelievable and only father figure and it's Alfred Pennyworth. And, and this is the go. one picture I could find with uh, such, such short notice. It does not have Andy Serkis, who is playing um, currently right now. It does not have Sean Pertree, who played it in um, Gotham, Gotham, or Jack Bannon, who's in the Pennyworth um, the Pennyworth show as well, too. So there's been a, a, quite a few Alfreds that have been through the years. <laughs> but uh, I don't need to digest as much. Alfred is, is probably the third most recognizable person. If this was Family Feud, name a character from Batman, it would be Batman, Joker, and it would probably be Alfred would be the third answer. He's one of the most famous people in this universe. He is the one who effectively raised Bruce Wayne when his, uh, when his parents were murdered when, and uh, took him in and, and trained him. And there's been a lot, you know, they didn't really spend a lot of time on Alfred until, you know, it got to around the 2000s and especially the Nolans. And they're like, there's a lot we can do in this man's backstory. And certainly now he's got his own show, his own storyline where he's MI6 and British intelligence and all this, because it's, who would have taught Bruce how to fight? Who would have made Bruce the world's greatest detective? And in the Nolan universe, it's, it's kind of him joining the league of, of shadows and the league of assassins, but ultimately at home, it really explores. And I think that that's where the relationship got taken to the next level. I mean, the Batman and Robin is all about Alfred dying and, and Batman's coming to grips with that and, and finding a cure. But uh, certainly the relationship that Michael Caine and Christian Bale have, uh, I think is one of the best things that have been done on the Batman films. And mm -hmm. certainly it shows a different dynamic, right? From the, oh, and you can borrow, borrow the rolls, rolls if you want, just make sure you bring it back with a full tank and you're just like okay so they're 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 equals they're equals in this world and and while bruce was gallivanting around you know um alfred kind of held down the estate and the business and everything here and uh kind of you know you see him as he helps him navigate and make the uh the bat cave and order in the supplies and stuff and and then that gets taken to the next level with the incorporation of jeremy irons and and Ben Affleck's Batman is bringing Jeremy Irons coffee and Jeremy that, Irons man. is his point person in, in his ear, much like the video games where he's flying the drones and he's working mm. on the ship and he's working on the Batmobile when Superman comes down in, in Justice League. And depending on the version of the film you saw, if he's wearing the blue or black suit. And um, but like I said, I think as far as Bat family, I think the best has been Bruce Wayne's anchor. You know, the best thing probably about Batman is that there's a fine hair separating him from the villains of the city. And he ultimately just skirts the line. And I think Pattinson's going to explore that more than any Batman prior. But you got to think that his anchor back to the good, pure side is Alfred Pennyworth. And I think Circus is really going to hammer that home in, in the new Batman too. But uh, I think for the, the best Bat family has been his ride or die day one as Gordon on the streets, but at home, Alfred his ride or die is his father figure is, is Alfred Pennyworth. So uh, he's my, my favorite in the Bat fam for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I, I mean, he, he, not only that, like he's there to uh, treat his medical uh, wounds like he'll come oh, yeah. back just beaten to do a bloody pulp and uh alfred will basically nurse him back to health uh and so he has you know the medical lab in there to kind of bring things so obviously um you know they dive more into that in the new history of him you know being a field medic and all that as well so you know and be able to nurse him nurse back his wounds and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's it's he's obviously uh an important character um it's, uh, spoilers for anybody's in the comics. He just died in the comic books somewhat recently within the last year or so. Uh, he's died. He's died before. He yeah, died in Dark Knight Returns. Course, but in, yeah. So uh, it, it, they had a big, huge thing of that as well. So that they had a big uh, uh, storyline with that as well. But uh, yeah, he's he's definitely one of the ones where um, he's Batman's, uh, like you said, anchor who he can rely on uh, in tough situations. And when he's incapacitated, uh, he can, you know, take care of business. And I will never not think on chest day, what is the point of all those push-ups if you can't lift a bloody log? <laughs> uh, so we've talked about the villains. We've talked about the family. Um, I, we don't want to spend too much time belaboring the point. Those are the two big things of the Bat universe. Uh, just around the horn quickly, you know, what – 75 years of comics. He's, he's, you know, this is the seventh Batman iteration. They're not stopping. We're going to, we're getting two, three, four franchises now. So ultimately there's something, you know, 
gun to your head, what's what makes Batman stand the test of time? What makes him such a good hero? What makes him so, uh, you know, toyetic or cinematic? You know, what's what's the best thing that that makes Batman adapt with the times? Whether we've talked about the 60s and we've talked about the 80s, it's 2022 and there's a new Batman. So what is it that that makes Batman hang around, hang around? AB. Uh, well, for me, Batman, and I've, you know, Batman was the, my very first uh, superhero that I liked as a child. Uh, I got the comics and, you know, fell in love with it. And for me, Batman, I've always loved Batman because he does not have powers. He's one of the main big superheroes that doesn't have any powers, doesn't have any abilities. He's not supernatural. Uh, you, you know, when you put him next to super, there's always you know him and Superman, and Superman is got every superpower known to man, and you have Batman who is just a man who basically made himself. He went out and trained in you know fifty different kinds of martial arts. He trained his mind. He you know put in the work to read and to build himself. I mean, uh, uh, the one drawback to that is he's a billionaire, so he you know has the money to do that kind of stuff. But he accomplished all those things himself, and he made himself into this hero. Uh, it wasn't just a, a thing that he was born with, or that he didn't get bit by a spider or something like that to inherit <laughs> these powers. He made himself into this hero, uh, and uh, by his own uh, by his own will, the determination of his will. And that's one of the things I've always loved about him. And on top of that, you know, he has the code of he will, he refuses to kill, uh, which, you know, in his situation is a tough, tough thing to do. Uh, there's, I, my two favorite guys have always been Batman and Punisher and they're two sides of the coin of the same coin. Uh, where you have a guy who basically they're two guys are carrying out the same mission. One it has no qualms with killing people and killing bad guys, and you have the other guy, Batman, who uh, refuses. In the, even in the uh, worst situations, where killing the bad guy would be the best and like most logical choice, he refuses to do it. And so I always love that uh, the the dynamics of the two, even though they're you know DC and Marvel, uh, they're the two sides to that coin where. You know, you have the dilemma of you know, like, you have this code of, uh, but you know, uh, and so yeah, I just love that. Zack Snyder has not read any of those issues where Batman does not kill. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Of, that's one <laughs> um, and that is that is one of the very much drawbacks of people things that people that like do not like about that, right? Is that, and that's been a huge thing from the beginning of Batman that he has the code, right? And. Uh, so they did not. People were up in arms about that. I I didn't care one way or the other. I mean, I I do love that about Batman, but you know, whatever, that's fine. And he has killed people obviously throughout the series, and that's gonna wait on him. But um, he's been yeah. killing the box office for for a while now, <laughs> Matthew. That's so true. what is it? What is it about Batman? You were a kid, you Batman with the pictures. What is it that you would tell <laughs> that you would tell four year old Matthew about why why thirty? Six-year-old loves, man. loves Batman. <laughs> what is it about the character? Um, his, for me, number one is probably his moral compass. We talked about briefly. He uh, doesn't kill. He uh, brings uh, the bad guys to justice as whole as possible. Sometimes <laughs> they just end up dead at the end of the movie. Not necessarily his fault every time. Uh, and. Uh, specifically in the animated series, uh, there are times, I mean, his Batman's bad guys are always breaking out of Arkham. That's because he's not. Be well, Peacemaker not talks about this in, in one of the episodes. It's unbelievable. Uh, they're, they're either always breaking out or at least or getting to a point where they can be released because yeah. it's a hospital, not necessarily a prison. And Batman, I guess, believes that a person can be helped after, you know, uh, he gets the bad guy, throws him back in Arkham, and there's a great couple of, at least one scene where Harley gets out, and uh, he's uh, bringing in Scarecrow, I think, to uh, back to Arkham, and in the hallway he meets Harley, and he, sh he reaches, out his he reaches out his hand to Shakers and says, stay out of trouble. Congratulations on getting out. She, <laughs> you know, she thinks uh, the world is against her in that episode specifically, but, uh, and she eventually has to go back to seek more help. But uh, it's definitely his uh, moral, his uh, his uh, 
affinity for justice. He uh, he saw his parents die in front of him. He's not going to uh, aff- afflict that to. I know he doesn't specific. shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, get over it. Now, for the ones he doesn't necessarily, not, those are for the supervillains. For the guys on the street, he does throw in jail. He his their first encounter with him, it's his uh, job to essentially scare them straight, dressing yeah. up as a giant bat, and it get and it gets put over so well, especially in the '89 Batman, where he uh, gets those two guys off on the roof, and the one guy as they're the carrying legend, them off yeah. into the into the. Uh, into the police car, the guy screaming, like, it was a bat, man, a giant bat. And it's always nice to see those characters putting over, you know, a six foot guy in a bat costume who, for all intents and purposes, does look ridiculous a lot of the time. <laughs> but in uh, books and in the in the acting, uh, he does strike fear into those people. Even uh, in Suicide Squad, one of my favorite scenes was... Um, uh was the enchantress uh shows uh the other the suicide squad uh like their best uh you know a happy memory essentially and uh will smith's is uh he killed batman and you can see it in his performance uh he says i killed the bat and he's like there's a slight pride but uh you can tell that it's a big deal to him because he, for every you know punk on gotham streets batman is a terrifying figure Mm -hmm. cool that's lovely guys i i think you know you guys nailed home what batman stands for i think more what i'll say the best thing that that probably stands and again the main reason why this year there's three batmans all very different and there's a plethora of shows and we've explored it a million different ways but i think this isn't my thought this is something i saw you heard on a podcast years ago but it stuck with me it's that i think Batman is our generation's like Hamlet and it can be reinvented and reinterpreted every so often and re-performed in different ways. And certainly Shakespeare ages incredibly well. We just saw Denzel get an Academy Award nomination for Macbeth in a very different retelling. And I think that ultimately that's probably the best way I can surmise Batman and what Batman stands for is that he's performing as him is is the modern Shakespeare and the modern Hamlet and the fact that you get to portray him as, you know, to what degree of darkness you want to, to what degree of comedic do you want to. And Shakespeare's always dabbled in both to varying levels. And I think that you can tap into a different Batman for everybody and you can get the Lego Batman, in which we haven't talked about funny enough. <laughs> uh, you can get the animated Batmans. You can get the Titans show. You can get the comics. You can get everything, which again is what you want. And that's kind of like Shakespeare in the regard is there's a multiple different kinds of plays and, and uh, you know, different kinds of settings that people can relate to. And I think that that's just the best thing why, you know, Pattinson's the seventh actor in live action to take over the cowl. And he's going to be playing it effectively darker than any of them before. And, you know, some of the actors have been Academy Award winners or gone on to win Academy Awards for different roles after and how their careers have been affected in different ways. But like I said, at least there's always this common club of playing Batman and, and exploring the PTSD and the darkness and the humanity for Gotham citizens. So that's always the thing I think it's going to last about the characters. So it's I think that's Batman and James Bond. So yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> and, yeah. And with Marvel, all the variants, Iron Man, because you're going to get 15 of them. Uh, we'll go around the horn. Just quick notes. The Batman in theaters now. None of us have seen it. Um, we will all be seeing it very shortly. It is a three-hour film. There is a lot in it. And like I said, we've already gotten the spin-off television show Greenlit, and they are going to plant seeds for multiple sequels as well, too. Uh, go around the horn quick. Cliff notes, spark notes. What do we hope we see? What do we want the most out of this movie that's been getting <laughs> glowing? A plus, 10 out of 10 reviews. Uh, okay, so I, I'm just going to kind of go take it in a little bit of a direction is uh, kind of where I think that they're going to base it off of from what the rumors have said. And, and these are some of my favorite Batman storylines. Uh, and Matt actually brought one up earlier, and that is Batman Year One. Uh, and these this is this actually forms as, a, as a, almost like a trilogy of storylines. So you got Batman Year One, 
coming off that with the majority of I think with the majority of the film is going to base be based on which is Batman the Long Halloween which is my one of my favorite if not my favorite Batman story arc and it's about Batman tracking down a serial killer uh it unfortunately is calendar man in this uh he's uh, kind of a, a dumb uh villain that they've kind of adapted and he's really really good in here and he kills people on uh on holidays each of the holidays he kills the new people so it's it's basically a neo-noir of batman tracking down uh the serial killer and then it's followed up by batman dark victory uh, with the same guys, Jeff uh, Jeff Loeb and uh, Tim Sale doing the art. Uh, the three of those together, if you follow the, the you read the three of those together, uh, it is a very very nice story arc. Uh, and I think they're, from what I have understood and from what it looks like from the uh, trailers and what I've seen, it looks like they're taking a lot of that from there. And then it's, you know, a very dark storyline. Uh, obviously year one is Frank Miller and you don't get much darker than Frank Miller uh, uh, Batman. And so uh, I'm very excited to see that. And I, like I've said uh, at the top with the, the Batman, the animated series, um, I love the Batman, the detective. And, you know, you have Ra's al Ghul, who refers to him as always refers to him as the de the detective or detective? Uh, I'm I'm very excited to see a Batman a true Batman detective story where it is a detective story from start to finish of him unraveling a case uh, and if you know three hours or three hours of that give me give me it all I'll take it and so you know uh, when you you know you see him trying to figure out Riddler's puzzles of him, and I'm I'm sure you know what we understand it's going to be you know grisly murder scenes or whatever. Uh, I'm eating it up. Batman think, detective horror story. Yes, please. I think ultimately, I know the runtime was the first thing that I was intrigued by. I think ultimately, I've made peace with it. I'm excited. I think it's just going to be like watching four episodes of a miniseries. I think sure, it's, I think the show it. is going to play like Batman miniseries. Matthew, uh, quickly, what are what are a few things you're looking for, hoping for, expecting? Um, well, it's been uh, said over and over and over again as uh, as far as production and story leaks have uh, are concerned. It's it's been uh, talked about as it's. Been, or it's been con compared to movies like uh, Seven and Zodiac, and when um, they sh when in the first trailer you see one of the Riddler's riddles, and in it is a coded message, and you saw his outfit. I was like, well, I mean, the Zodiac, you know, case is one of my favorites to do research on. Uh, it has been for a long time, so to incorporate that into a Batman movie. You've got my money right there for sure. Mm -hmm. I am excited to see Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. Yes, he uh, well, has he does, he has, and we compared Batman and James Bond. Jeffrey Wright uh, was uh, Daniel Craig's Felix mm -hmm. Leiter, yeah. and in a similar situation, uh, similar similarities in character for sure. An ally, um, um, <clears throat> an ally to the hero. Um, the two things I'm hoping to see one will be a Joker cameo, mm -hmm. maybe. I'm hoping for some sort of Joker presence. Whether it's talk about that. we'll talk about that off camera. Well, he's fighting. He's fighting the clowns at one point, right? And right. So, that's right. Uh, you, you know, like they, they're going to keep, the keep, keep your keep your eyes on on Barry Egan, who's playing uh, the lieutenant something in the cast. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, A lot of people have been rumored that that gentleman in the Eternals is uh, is he or is he oh, not? Ke Our Joker oh, very key, is a Keel. Keel. Yeah. Keegan. Is that it? Keel. So with Keel. Yeah. if there's a Joker appearance, we'll have the big four: Keel. Joker, Riddler, Penguin, and Catwoman. On screen for the first time since 1966, which would yep. be amazing. Um, and the one thing I want to see more than anything is a stack of Little Caesar boxes in the Bat Cave. Little Caesars has had their promotion of the Bat Calzone <laughs> pizza thing, and there's no way they're going to have that without, uh, you know, at least a billboard in the background for Little Caesars. Yeah, but I'm hoping funny. for a stack of pies <laughs> uh, next to the Bat computer. That's awesome. funny. Yeah, Barry Keegan is playing Officer Stanley Merkel, who had a little bit of tepid. Again, I'm the Twitter guy. A little bit of tepid on, is he? He looks pretty crazy. 
Well, so we'll see if he always play. He's very good at playing a very like disturbed. Yeah, so we'll kind of see character. if he's the guy who, again, in this universe, is maybe motivated by the Batman in the wrong way. Um, I, like I said, you could just put to put a pin in that. I just you know, Pattinson. I've been defending Pattinson's. I know a lot of people were like, "Oh, Twilight's in this," and I certainly shut out my one friend V, who's, "Oh, I don't want Twilight in my Batman." Buddy, good time, good time, yeah, Pattinson. Good time. Pattinson, the lighthouse. Like, let's. Pattinson, let's go. And I just think he's one of the, you know, uh, Nirvana's not really my my jam, my cup of tea. I'm more of a pop star. Uh, but this is Matt Reeves saying, if Kurt Cobain was Bruce Wayne, this is what you're getting. And and I can I can get into Seattle grunge for three hours and watch it for that. So I'm uh, like I said, just like you guys, detective, world's greatest detective for a reason. Let's see it. And Matt Reeves is going to put that story uh, on film, and um, and that's where we're where we're heading. But I am really excited to see what Pattinson does with this and, and really toes the line of being unhinged. Dude is weird off camera. Dude is insane. So let's just try to channel 25% of his insanity and we're going to be like, wow, what an unhinged Bruce Wayne. So I'm very excited for that. Um, got out of here in good time. Anything else, gentlemen? Well, uh, for ahead. my costume, I kind of went for Commissioner Gordon, but as uh, as the episode went on, I think it's looking more like Frank Oz. Oh, yeah, yes, <laughs> you look great. I knew exactly what you were. I went with oh, the yeah, Gotham totally. hat. I went with the Gotham Bronx Bombers hat today too, and the Batman Under Armour and GNC mug. So, <laughs> okay, guys, let's get out of here, gentlemen. Who's going to finish the quote? I never said thank you, and you'll never have to. Oops.